good morning. You are welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. My name is Pastor Yemi Omogboyega. With me is uh, my dear wife, Mommy Omogboyega. God bless you as you listen to the Word of God this morning. Kindly remember to share this message. Press the like button. Uh, subscribe to our channel. I want to appreciate every one of you who have subscribed. Please join them if you haven't. Because here, God has some treasures for you every day. Please join us. God bless you. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for yet another opportunity for being with us, to, that you granted to us to be alive, to be able to share your word this morning. It is by your grace, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by your spirit. It is because you have mercy upon us, that's why we're able to see today. Thank you for the grace of coming to you to share your word, even with your people. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, we pray, whatever sins are in our lives, please forgive us in Jesus' name. Whatever sins other people have committed against us, the grace to forgive them, please uh, grant unto us in Jesus' name. We also pray that today, let it be a day that we will remember for good in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be uh, accelerated promotions in our lives today, in Jesus' name. The miracles that, unsurpassed miracles that, you know, we pray that you perform such miracles in our lives today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are taking our Bible passage from the book of Luke, chapter 24, from verse 13. I will stop at the comfortable place. Kindly listen. Thank you. God bless you. Now, behold... Two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. I said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another? As you walk and are sad. God bless you, man. God bless you, man. That's okay. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is like what Yoruba says. What you are looking for in Sokoto is right in the pockets of your trousers. You know, in Yoruba, Sokoto is an ancient town in the northern part of Nigeria. Sokoto, trousers, is right with us, especially with the male boys, I mean the male, that we use trousers. So Yoruba looks at it, so you are looking for something. and you, Maybe you are in the western part of Nigeria, or you are in the eastern part of Nigeria, and you travel all the way to Sokoto, which is thousands of miles away, to look for it. Whereas what you are looking for is right inside your Sokoto trousers, the pockets of your Sokoto. So it's like the journey of the Israelites also. A journey that was supposed to last 40 days, that lasted 40 years. We know the negative effect, except Caleb and Joshua. Nobody that has been born that was of age, as at the time they left the land of Egypt, got to the promised land, except Joseph, Joshua and Caleb. So all the other ones that God did, they are the ones that were born after the emigration. May the Lord God Almighty help us. May the veils in our eyes, on our eyes, be opened. Let me start with the, that, lead, that leads me to the topic for today. Exactly how the Bible says, it says, their eyes were restrained Therefore, they could not recognize that it was Jesus that was speaking with them. 
brethren, is exact. That's exactly what is happening in Christianity. Even in the case of Christ Himself, Isaiah sixty or sixty-one or so, one to four, sixty or sixty-one, one or four. Please kindly confirm. Um, it has been foretold the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth. And for 33 years, Jesus had studied the Bible extensively well. For the first 12 years that he had started teaching, teaching, teaching in the synagogues. But something was tested in his life when they went for the wedding in Cana. And the mother, of course, the mother knew the mission of Christ. But Christ himself knew that the time for his mission had not come. You can imagine. Christ had studied the Bible. He has read Isaiah 60 or 61, 1 to 4. He has read it very well, several times. But he, the manifestation of his calling, of his mission, did not come up until that point when he started, I mean, he read the Bible when he called for the scroll, and then he read the Bible and he read the book of Isaiah, and then that very day, you know, previously when the mother wanted him to perform miracles, he said, my time had not come. So, but the day his time came, he knew. Even though he, had, he knew Isaiah. But after reading that Isaiah that day, he now said, today, the prophecy is fulfilled. Today, my time has come. I am to deliver the oppressed. I am to set the captives free. I am to preach the acceptable. That was when Christ started his ministration. That was the day he recognized. You know, he, he knew the confirmation of his calling. That was the day it came. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. You're welcome back. Um, like I said, the topic for today is until the veil is removed from our eyes, we will not understand Christianity. Until the veil is removed from our eyes, we will not understand Christianity. Now, like I said, Jesus, not until his time came, he did not make that pronouncement that his time has come. And even when he was invited to perform a miracle during that wedding, he said, my time has not come. And when it came, he knew. Likewise, brethren, many of us are calling ourselves Christians, but we did not understand what Christianity means. Many, indeed, it's even more rampant amongst our Christian leaders. I've heard of leaders, you know, renowned minister, I mean, leader of, uh, in, in Christianity, of a Pentecostal church that will always boast that, look, you know, when there was, uh, he said, I understand the Bible to the point that, you know, I, I mean, like, nobody can teach me, but I am the one that will teach them. Because he always sees what was wrong with the ministration of other people. You cannot boast in matter of the knowledge of the word of God. Because the more you think you know, the less you know. The more you think you know, the less you understand. Nobody can sit down and say, yes, I am an authority in the word of God. Therefore, that is why you can see the leadership issues we have 
in the church of God today. Many are so post through many things that they have understood it all and then unfortunately God used simple things like the Bible says, simple things to bring about their folly. And what is the example of the simple things? For instance, the law and grace is a major issue or major top there are major topics in the bible the laws 613 of them which are in the old testament and the grace which is about the new testament till today many of our religious leaders they don't understand the difference they studied the bible so much that they think that they have understood it, but unfortunately, in the application where wisdom is, they lag behind because they thought they knew, but unfortunately, they didn't know. Simply, for instance, you understood or you understand all the passages in the Old Testament, but you do not understand Hebrews 7 which made the total change that Christ came for, which brought about the grace, which brought about the end of the Levitical era, which told us that we are now, you know, we have a new priest, not the um, mosaic priests of those days, not the Levites of those days, which told us clearly that the Lord has erased the old laws and has, you know, brought about a better covenant that is in the order of Melchizedek, king of Salem, who has no beginning, who has no end. But what we do today, what we are doing is we are mixing the old that the Lord has erased with the new because we read it. We didn't understand. Hebrew 7, 14, particularly 14 to the end. We, didn't, we did not understand 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from 1 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, that the law kills but the Spirit gives life. We did not understand Matthew 22 that tells us all those 613 laws are subsumed under love your God with the whole of your heart and your might and everything in you and love your neighbor as yourself. We did not understand. Because we did not understand, that is why we can bring Malachi 3 to 10 to say you want to, I mean, Day tithes that God will cause you that everything is this is and that because maybe we didn't understand. Secondly, some may understand, but because it's a juicy thing to bring in money, they will stick to it. But many did not understand. We did not understand that Bible says the law kills. That law never achieved anything. And those who were operating it, even, Bible says they are just mere flesh. And therefore, the Lord himself erased everything. Then he brought Christ, who is the best priest, faultless uh, priest, the one that has the power of eternity, the one that will eventually reign in this world for eternity, rule this world, the only president King that the whole world will bow to for eternity. They did not understand. Even when Christ came till today, the Israelites didn't know that he had come because they lacked understanding. They were look, they are still looking for the Messiah. Whereas we are looking at the second coming because of what the Bible tells us. But when he came, they questioned him. They came. They even killed him. Thank God it is for fulfilling the purpose. 
for which he came. They did not understand when they, he, Christ himself confirmed it that, look, forgive them, O Lord, for they know not what they are doing. They didn't understand what they are doing. Because if they understood that what they are doing will bring about the salvation, they would, honestly, they wouldn't want to kill him. They were looking for, they didn't understand that the kingdom of God was here then. They were looking for the king that would be what his, Christ would be during his second time. That is, being the, they were looking for political leadership that will end their poverty, that will give them, not knowing that they have to work hard now to end their own poverty. That they have to believe and trust in God and work hard to get what they want. No, they are looking for somebody who will give them free education, free meal, free everything, free something, who will, so, who will suppress all the other powers. And yes, they were looking for it then. But not knowing that the Messiah was with them and they killed the Messiah, not knowing also that, not understanding that that Messiah is supposed to, I mean, what they are doing is furthering the advancement of the kingdom of God coming to this world. That is why today, if our leaders understood, nobody, just like Maureen Badiger was saying in one of the videos of yesterday on YouTube, honest, honestly speaking, I urge you to go and check Maureen Badiger, why pastors, uh, when will pastors or something ask for forgiveness? If our leaders, those who are boastful in the word of God today, that they understand the word of God in, in them, if they realize that Hebrews seven fourteen to the end, if they understood that, they would have known the difference between the law and the grace. They will understand the difference between the laws. They will not institute all these their man-made doctrines, thinking that it was the one that would take it is the one that would take them to the kingdom of God. Thank God we did the treat we treated the topic about this thief on the cross yesterday. If they understood that. God does as he pleases. The person you write down, God can raise up. The person you underrate, God can make great. If only they understood that, they would have known that there is no man-made set of doctrines that will take you to heaven. Even your giving. Your giving, they are only treasures that you are laying in heaven. That is, even if you ever get to the heaven. If you miss the point, you, you the treasures may be there, you may not uh, get them because... If you don't make heaven, how will you get the rewards there? That's why what we need to do is make sure that our focus is to make for heaven. They will not, they don't understand that. Look at the thief on the cross who did not go through baptism, who did not go through uh, doctrinal teachings, who did not go through the years. Just at that point, Christ had the redeeming power to perfect everything in spite of his shortcomings and yet make him to get to heaven. Why are we, you want to marry, you go through a lot of doctrinal teachings such that, you know, or stupid things or something, impracticable things or some things that, you know, tilt towards. If they understood, they won't even be collecting money for, 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 for counseling in the church of God for wedding. They won't. They would, if they knew how God operates, they wouldn't be conducting pregnancy tests because they want to, like Thomas, they want to see that it is because they think they are doing the will of God. It is not to say that people should be wayward. You see, if the people that want to wed themselves know God, everything will just be in place. Nobody will be forcing them to say, go and carry out this test. Go and carry. Did I not tell you of a wedding that was conducted in my church one time, I mean, not in my church, in another church, but by a member of our church that wedded in another church. And they have done all their so-called counseling and everything. And yet the lady was pregnant that God even made that clear, manifest, at the point of joining them together that <laughs> people who have eyes, this girl is pregnant, it became a controversy. Until somebody was so smart and said, oh, well, I'm not a doctor, but can we now go to the doctor now go confirm before we join them together and that wedding was sol solemnized. I told you, and later this kangaroo discipline, they now said they suspended the guy and then that he has repented. 
Why the foolishness in the first place of even going through all those rigors? If they understand what who God is that he can do as he pleases, irrespective, if they understand that, if the veils were removed from their eyes that harlots were saved, the good Samaritan was given an example compared to the holy, holy, the rabbis, our religious leaders today, who themselves did not pass through certain things and are imposing those things on people now because they think, they consider their own as past, but that others must be subjected to things that God did not, who, if they understood, they will allow God to do what God wants to do in people's lives instead of, if they understood, they would not say, don't marry from even another Christian fold. Just marry from our own fold because they think they know it all. If they knew that, they would not. They would go pray for that disruption. You are welcome back. Like I was saying, if only our religious leaders understand God the way they say they understood him, they will not make themselves, you see, did the Bible not say, don't call anybody your father in the Lord, that we are all the same before God, that we are all messengers, ministers of God. If they understood, did they not read or hear that the Bible says, we are ministers of the new covenant, not of the law, but of the new covenant. Brethren, if our people understand all these things, they will not continue to put us into... If they understand the word of God, wouldn't the people know that God expects them, all the monies collected in the church, are expected to be spent on the people, not on... I mean... To impact directly the lives of the people. They did not say they sold all the things that they had and they, they gave, they shared it according to people's needs. Why are we emphasizing giving to church, giving to church, giving to church without necessarily asking that how much have we given back to the people according to the word of God? Even right from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 14, 22 to the end. Brethren, the kingdom of God is simple. But until the veils are removed from our eyes, we'll be practicing religion. We'll be, we'll be religious. We'll be going through set of, I mean, today you say, God of Lagbaja, God of Temedo. Not God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, who owns even the Lagbaja and Temedo. We are worshipping the Lagbaja of Antemedu. Many of us fear our geos more than we fear God Almighty. If we understand. If we understand that the Bible says, my people perish from lack of knowledge, how many of us will not read the Bible and be waiting for somebody to interpret the Bible to us? How many of us? Did the Bible not tell us that a time will come, that God himself said a time will come that I will write my laws in people's hearts. There is this stupid um, um, argument which will not arise at all. Electronic Bible. Somebody telling you your iPhone that contains the Bible is uh, the devil. Did, did they not understand the uh, a denomination that said TV was a devil's box? And today is using the TV, now he's now reversing himself. Look at the leadership. Look at, at that level. Is it not the same leadership that said they were not going to marry? They are going to be, you know, eunuchs for God. And But when the time to marry came, he veered off and married. When will the veils be removed from our eyes? You, their followers. I, their followers. I thank God for 60 years I was blind. 
being misled, but I didn't understand until God himself opened the way. If you read many of our devotionals today, they are promoting the interest of their writers, not preaching the word of God. That's why I thank God it was when God started this ministry also that he gave me a better devotional. The Bible in One Year by Nicky Gumbel. That will tell you, that will teach you the Old Testament and the New Testament fulfillment the same day, the same way. Anytime, please go and just Google, uh, just search for, go to your Play Store, search for Bible in One Year. Red, red and white logo by Nicky Gumbel. Uh, there is no nothing, no no devotional that has well. I think daily bread tried, um, a few others tried, but there is no 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 devotional has blessed me more than that one. Honestly speaking, and is indeed, it is my manual. It is my syllabus, you know, that point that made the Bible clearer to me. I've been listening to that ministration for almost four years now. I've never seen tight your way to prosperity. Rather, I saw where I said everything is gifted to us free and we don't collect, we don't impose money on people when we get to when it gets to raising money, but God is funding his church. God Almighty is funding. I've never had, if you don't pay your tithe, you will not make heaven. I've never had, uh, if you pay, I mean, pay, eat your tithe and die. And foolishly, we will be ministering that uh, the whites hate the black and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. Black is, uh, this. you see, part of the diversionary measures to attract us to them so that we will not make oh. Did the Bible not tell us that we should give generously to the poor? James 1.26, to the widows, to the orphan, to the you know, visitors to people. Did the church, did, did the Bible not say we should redistribute the wealth given to just 2 Corinthians chapter 8? Please read it from beginning to the end, about verse 15 or so, if I'm correct. Brethren, until the veils are removed from our eyes, we will not understand. But you yourself, until you sit down, and realize that you use your God-given talent, you study the word of God and you see the truth, Hebrews 7, you will never be freed from the grip, strong grips. These people will say, that the day you become born again, I'll be praying for you. Do you know that I begin to, my spirit is telling me that praying for you is not praying for you, it's putting you in bondage. You surrender your names to the church and then they begin to, manipulate your destiny. They call it prayers, but they know what they are doing with it. Until you come to God yourself, until you develop personal relationship with God, you will never be freed from religious leaders' oppression. You will, in fact, today, you will still continue to defend the evil they are, and you will think that they are the way to God. They are not. No matter how big they are, they are ordinary men who are equal with you in serving the Lord, if only you will serve the Lord. Until you know that, you will never be freed from being exploited psychologically, financially. God worked for seven, six days. On the seventh day, he rested. God worked for Six days. On the seventh day, he rested. You will never be free until you understand what the example that God himself gave there. You will never be at peace until you understand what God did there. 
that you spend time more time working. As you are working, that you are praying, you are doing everything. Personal, from your Monday to Saturday, personal relationship with God. Personal relationship. Even it's becoming obviously clear that even the Sabbath day actually is Saturday. And you won't understand. Even when we are saying that Christ died on Friday and rose on Sunday. How true. Christ died on Wednesday because one day, one night makes one evening. I'm, I'm sorry, one evening, one morning makes a whole day. 24 hours. Are we not saying 24 hours calendar? Why did we say Jesus died and we say Easter? Why did we say Jesus died on Friday and woke up? Does that complete us about, if at all, one and a half or two and a half days? And we equated it to three days. It's wrong. Christ did not die on a Friday. He died on a Wednesday. And his rising up was three days after. Yet these things are in the Bible there. The two Sabbaths, the high Sabbath and the normal Sabbath. Christ rose in between. It was in between because those who prepared the perfume, the women that prepared the perfume, they prepared it and rested on a Sabbath day and then before they went ahead for the project. What do we understand by what? These things are there, but our earlier or our renowned religious leaders, they didn't see these things. They didn't understand. They saw it rather. They didn't recognize it. Just as those people conversing did not recognize their eyes were constrained. The eyes of our leaders in the church were constrained to so the point that they left Christ and were worshipping mammon. Money. Monday to Saturday, you are supposed to develop your personal relationship with God. Study the Bible yourself. Read it. Question what your teachers taught you on Sunday throughout. And then pray to God. Then hard work for your daily living so that you fend for yourself. You don't beg for bread in the house of God. Yet, the Lord supplies his people's needs according to his riches without begging. Who can give me one billion naira stealing by appeal? If you don't pay your tithe, you will die stealing by coercion, stealing by, I mean, robbery using the Bible out loud Malachi 3 8 to 10 put money in God's basket <laughs> offering basket God's basket rubbish stealing by trick give everything you have to the Lord so that it will be multiplied and you give it, nothing is coming. Stealing by Kajoli. Destroying your destiny to build their own destiny, their own empire. Thank God the empires are crumbling. But when God arose, He raised people like Maureen Badejo to expose all this. He raised people like Daddy Freeze. He raised people like Adelaide. God, forget about their background, though. God can. If God can use Balaam's donkey to speak, God can use even a sinner to win the souls of a self-righteous man. Forget, forget, forget. Don't if you want to look at human background, forget. Your own leaders, these are our leaders, they are more wicked than you think these people are. God is using them mightily. When God opened my eyes, ah, in those days when they talk of tithe, I will rebook the people. I would tell them that that's why their lives were what it is because they didn't, those who knew me, with, they would testify what I did when, because I was working on the doctrines, evil doctrines that they gave to us. 
the Lord will help us in the night. Until your eyes, the veils in our eyes are open. In fact, those of you who are still following them until today, until it's unfortunate, I pray to God Almighty that God will liberate you. Your eyes will open. The veils that they used to cover your eyes, that you now believe they rather than God, God will remove it and you will see. And I pray it is not too late for you. You, to, you that will not be in your graveyard before you realize that you are dealing with scammers. Excuse me. So, brethren, God will remove the veil that is covering your eyes. Like I did say, those of them who have collected your name and are using, I mean, using their manipulative powers to manipulate your destiny so that you now believe and trust in them than God Almighty who created you. God will render powerless every, every juju, every magical power, everything they are using. They are deceiving us. Everything they are using to deceive you, God will spoil it today in the mighty name of Jesus. God is already doing so. When there was land tremor in Nigeria, in the Jebu area, area, somebody said it was because he was praying. Go and Google it. The history of land tremor in Nigeria. Uh, you know, because we didn't know until one man, Bishop Seth Kale, late Bishop Seth Kale, an Anglican also priest, said this thing has been happening. Somebody claimed it and said, it is when I was praying that the ground shook. Lie. Go and Google it. Just a land tremor in Nigeria. History of land tremor in Nigeria. It happened in 1930, the first time, till that very one that started, happened in the year 2000 and recently, I mean, not too long ago. That's how they are deceiving us. Is God not exposing them? May God remove the veils in your eyes. May God remove the veils in my eyes. What God requires you to do is Develop personal relationship with God. Develop personal relationship with God. Develop personal relationship with God. Study your Bible from Monday to Saturday. On Sunday, go and listen to the Word of God. All these your the print ministry programs every day is a waste of time. It's a waste of your precious time that God gave to you to serve Him directly Himself. Serving God is every day. But it is personal from Monday to Saturday. Even though we accept Saturday now, Monday now, Sunday now as a, as a worship day, but it's still Sabbath. If you calculate the Easter with the work, rise, rise, and Sabbath is still Saturday. But let's leave that. What is important now is serve God. Serving God is 24 hours. Nobody will beg you to read the Bible. Nobody will direct you. Anymore. But the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we bless your holy name. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. King of kings, Lord of lords, I thank you for a time like this. That you open, that you remove the constraints in our eyes to see. If not, I just wondered. So I would have wired away my life, not even knowing you. It would have been a shocker by the time we get to heaven. And the voice comes, I know you not. I thank you because you removed the veil from my eyes. I pray. As many as still are in the bondage of serving man instead of you today, please remove the veils from their eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Set us free. Set all these captives free. Ah, somebody is being destroyed and is defending his destroyer. That's not your plan for us, Heavenly Father. Somebody is exploiting your destiny. Somebody is killing you, maiming you, destroying everything about you with everything. To use everything to manipulate you to that he builds his own empire for him and for the generations to come. Oh Lord God of heaven and earth, please set our people free. As many of you that are still blindfolded. I say, God will open your eyes. And as there are many of you that will say you will persist in destroying the destiny of others to build your own. Ah, Heavenly Father, touch their hearts. I mean, you don't like the death of a sinner. 
No, but you want him to repent. When will, just like Maureen Badija will say, when will they come and like Benny, Benny Hinn, like Bishop Michael Konko, and say, people, I'm sorry. And stop, do, I will stop doing this thing. It is wrong. When will they read Hebrew 14? We should make it clear that all these things are outlawed. When will they read them and then repent? Oh God, this intervene. Yes, thank you for exposing them, but intervene in their lives so that they stop manipulating the people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive them for the ones they've done. The moment they repent, oh Lord, have mercy upon them. But if they say they won't repent, Lord, you know what to do. Everything is in your hand. You do as you please. Please, Lord, intervene again. You are already intervening. Accelerate it. Use anybody to straighten your word so that we all become Christians instead of religious by gods. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, please share this message. It's a serious message. Destinies have been destroyed every day. You are camped. Many died along the road. They will still die if they will die, but not that somebody used, they, you know. <sighs> Brethren, stop being fooled. God has delivered you now. Stop fooling yourself by following them. Go and align with God Almighty directly. Don't align with any daddy geo. Share this message. Share it. Share it. You will be saving a lot of souls. And God will reward you for good. Have a wonderful day.